So I've got two lenses here that are really very different lenses, but they both fit into really the same range of use. And you might prefer one over the other. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the difference between a 70 to 200 2.8 zoom and one of my favorites, 135 millimeter 2.0 prime lens. Stick around. One of the most popular lenses in the world is a 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 zoom lens. And it's really no surprise why. They're really very, very versatile. The 2.8 aperture is nice and wide, and most of them have image stabilization, which is great. I'm not talking specifically about any one 70 to 200 zoom. This is the Canon Mark II version. Nikon has one. Every brand, Sigma, Tamron, they all have great versions of the 70 to 200 2.8 zoom because it's, like I said, it's a very popular lens. Uh, and the reason is because it's so versatile. It's, I use it fairly often, it's great in a lot of situations, especially when you need to reach. It's great for sports, it's great for you know, street photography, uh, it's great for candid stuff. It's really has a lot of great uses to it. And quality wise and image quality wise, really just an amazing lens. I don't really use zooms a lot, but this is one that I definitely have to have. But if I wasn't gonna use this lens, if I needed something in the 70 to 200 range, and I wasn't gonna use this lens, which lens would I use? Well, the 135 millimeter focal length really fits right in the middle of this range. This is the Canon version, the Canon 135 millimeter 2.0 lens. I've had this lens for probably 15 years now. It's, it might be my favorite lens. I know I say that about all my lenses, but this might be my favorite. It fits right in the middle of that 70 to 200 millimeter range. And so focal length wise, it kind of serves your needs. You know, it might be a little bit too telephoto for some situations. You might have to move back a little bit if you can. It might not quite have as much reach as a 200 millimeter, uh, but you can actually crop in your computer later on, which is good. It fits right in the middle of that range. And it's got a 2.0 aperture as opposed to 2.8. Uh, not a huge difference, uh, one stop, uh, but when you get to that and when you're getting to the extreme end of the wide aperture lenses, 2.0 and 2.8 actually does kind of make a difference. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples here of shots taken at 2.8 and 2.0. You can see what the difference is uh, in the background blur, but not only is the background gonna be softer with the 2.0, but you're gaining an extra stop of light. So you can actually shoot handheld in some situations at a faster shutter speed. Now the zoom lens, most of those zoom lenses, uh, the 70 to 200 now have image stabilization, which counteracts the additional speed you're gonna get out of the 2.0, one extra stop of aperture on the 2.0. But I love shooting with this 135 millimeter lens. Now this costs less than half of what the zoom lens costs. It's probably less than half the size and less than half the weight. So to have a lens like this in your bag that doesn't take up a huge space and it's not dragging you down like a big heavy lens does all day, uh, it's a really great nice light lens. It's small, it's relatively inexpensive, and it'll fit that nice telephoto range where even if you don't have as much reach as you do with a zoom like this, it still gives you good reach. It's great for picking out details and really narrowing and focusing in on some smaller things in your image. But you know, what do you need? What's more important to you? You know, the wider aperture, smaller, lighter, cheaper lens, or the super versatility with image stabilization of a 70 to 200 zoom? Well, obviously I couldn't pick between either of these because I have both of them and you might find yourself in the same situation. I never have both of them with me at the same time. When I'm packing up my gear for a trip, it's usually either one or the other, it's usually the prime lens, uh, but often I'll take just the zoom lens. If I'm going out with only zooms, I'll take my 24 to 70, my 70 to 200, and that covers everything that I need. I'll use this primarily the 70 to 200 for events, for things that I'm being paid for, where I have to get the shot. It's not really so much about my own creativity and my own photography as it is about delivering the product uh, to the end user, so I'll use the 70 to 200 2.8 in situations like that where I know I need to deliver a certain product. This gives me the versatility I need to get that, and I can kind of forego a little bit of my own self-indulgence uh, with a prime lens like this. So, like I said, you might need both of these. Uh, I found out that I do, and I'm gonna keep using both of them, but they both have very different uses, even though they're kind of similar in their use and in their focal range. So that's my two cents. If you have any you know, comments or opinions or anything on why you prefer one over the other, definitely put them in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear it. If you're thinking about getting either one of these lenses or any other brand lens in these ranges, uh, definitely put that in the comments below. 
I'll try to help you out with that. I'm going to put links here to uh, the review that I did for this 135 lens, and I'll put one here for the review that I did for the 70 to 200 2.8 zoom lens. Both great lenses. I hope you found this a little bit interesting. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.